Hey, how we doing, YouTube? Just a quick video to cover some of the stories that happened over the weekend. Uh, it's a Memorial Day, so I'm not, uh, you know, going to be sitting here for 45 minutes. Um, but I did see a couple things that really grabbed my attention, and I didn't think they were getting enough play, so I thought maybe I'd put them out there. Um, one is we might all die. No, not really. But seriously, something really scary uh, happened in the last few days. Super bugs are now real. So that thing that we've all been terrified of for the last 20 years, that there's going to emerge eventually a antibiotic resistant form of bacteria, that happened in Pennsylvania. A woman got an infection that's resistant to all forms of uh, anti uh, uh, antibacteria drugs, um, including the one that is essentially what they equate as a nuclear bomb of antibiotics. Completely resistant. So the alarming thing about it is not only is it in Pennsylvania, um, it's not the first they've ever seen in the world but it's someone who hadn't traveled outside of Pennsylvania in like six months and I don't think has been out of the country for any substantial amount of time so essentially what that's saying is that um, there was a genetic mutation caused by the environment in which this bacteria was born and raised Pennsylvania that's very alarming because that means that this is a genetic trait that could pop up not just in this one bacteria but is a result of environment and the current environment in which most to all bacteria in this country live in is basically that same environment in which it's just a wash in antibiotics that's a pretty big deal and I didn't hear it get a lot of play that I saw a few people cover it I first saw it on Twitter I think Reuters um, put it out there first I could be wrong that's where I saw it but that's alarming very alarming just wanted to give you a heads up so you should be ter uh, so you can be terrified on Memorial Day uh, the other interesting political news that I saw come out is that Bill Crystal, um, I don't, not Billy Crystal, Bill Crystal, who is a conservative um, mouthpiece, I guess you would call him, has been part of the failed anti Trump movement for five, six months now. However, he's been actively seeking uh, a quote unquote real conservative alternative. Uh, to Donald Trump to run in the upcoming election. Everybody knew he was doing this. He's been courting people like Mitt Romney and um, a few other people you've never heard of. But today, he tweeted out, just so you know, I mean, I'm paraphrasing, just so you know, there is going to be a third-party independent conservative candidate uh, with a strong record and uh, a strong team and lots of money backing him. Now, normally I would say take that with a grain of salt, except that the timing seems to be rather odd. And Bill Crystal doesn't strike me as the kind of guy who would just throw something out there unless he actually thinks there's that he, he's got someone, somebody locked in. Um, I find it difficult to believe at this point but it's intriguing like I said I know he's been actively seeking someone and part of the reason that makes me believe him is because there are certain uh, Republicans Paul Ryan being chief among them who still haven't come around to endorsing Donald Trump um, and I've been saying not here but uh, in my private conversations I've been saying I believe that's because 
they think there's still a possibility of a more conservative alternative who they can endorse even if that person ends up losing they'll be perceived as sticking to their conservative you know values and um, uh, being more lined up with their actual conservative base their voter base I thought the chances of that were getting slimmer by the day but now with this tweet coming out from a man who I know has been actively very actively courting and seeking people to run and um, has the backing of some major financial players who have said that they refuse to contribute to Trump's campaign. These are, I'm talking about traditional Republican big money donors. There's quite a few of them who've said that they're, they, they just won't get behind Trump. Um, so if they can find a viable candidate, the money's there. Um, there's still time to get on, I think, every ballot except for Texas. So... I think maybe there might be a third person jumping into this race pretty soon. Now the interesting thing about that is if there's three people in the race, I think there's going to be four. <laughs> because uh, Bernie Sanders is an independent candidate. He's running for the Democratic nomination, but he's been an independent his entire political career. Um, the reason why he said he will not run as a third party candidate is he believes, rightly so, that it will split the left and increase the chances that uh, Donald Trump becomes president. And he said over and over and over again he'll do everything he possibly can to make sure that doesn't happen. Well now with a counterbalance independent candidate on the right, if that's the case, I think that that argument against an independent bid for Sanders goes out the window. Now I think he may consider running independent, and if he does, will probably win. Now, I say he'll probably win, I mean he'll probably get the most votes, because he's by far the most popular person out there right now among the independent vote, and the young people under 35. That's how you win a general election. You need people under 35, and you need the independent vote. Because the independent vote, most people don't realize this, there's, I think, at least twice as many independent voters as there are Democrats and Republicans combined in this country now. I think it's 40% of the electorate is independent. Um, I'm sorry, of the, uh, yeah, of the, of the, the, the national electorate. The, I could be wrong, my numbers might be wrong here, but I think something like 40% of the people just don't vote. They're not registered at all. There's 40% that are independent, and the other 20% are Republicans and Democrats. Now, you wouldn't know that um, because the Republicans and Democrats have a stranglehold on American politics, but in 2016, the independent vote is actually much, much larger than Republicans and Democrats. So people who do well among independent voters have the highest chance to win in a general election. Now, when I say win, I mean get the most votes. I don't actually mean win because we have an archaic system. Um, we have what's called the Electoral College of the uh, 2000 Bush-Gore debacle fame. Everybody knows about the Electoral College now, right? Well, what, people, what most people don't know is that if no candidate reaches a certain threshold, a certain percentage within the Electoral College, which is based on percentages, um, it's, it's kind of like the way that they do the primaries. You vote for a representative to go vote for the candidate. It's ridiculous. In this day and age, it's absolutely ridiculous, but we still have it. If no candidate in the race reaches that threshold, then the Electoral College then defers to the House of Representatives. The House of Representatives then selects among the candidates who becomes president. Okay? So if there's four people in the race, it, unless someone just crushes everybody else, which Sanders could, there's a pretty likely scenario that no, uh, uh, out there that no one reaches the threshold and that the House of Representatives selects the next president of the United States regardless of how the American people vote. 
If you think people are angry now, just wait until if that happened. I mean, I don't know. I feel like people might light things, some things on fire. <laughs> um, now, I'm unclear, and honestly, I don't think because I don't. It's never been done. I don't believe. I don't think even Washington insiders are quite clear right now. I'm sure it's written down somewhere. But I don't think the majority of them are clear on whether or not it is the incumbent house that selects or whether it's the incoming house of representatives that selects because it's a, we're in an election year. So you don't only vote for president, you also vote for senators and you also vote for a congressman. So we're, I'm not sure if it's the, the congressmen that have been elected in that cycle who choose the president or if it's the people who are leaving or are already incumbent that choose the president in that scenario. Very strange, but interesting nonetheless. The last thing I have to comment on, even though I keep harping on it, is this email thing. I went over how bad politically it was going to be for Hillary Clinton. I called it, even though the day that it came out it didn't get a lot of play. I knew it was going to be horrendous for them. Um... It's it's getting worse by the day. And not because of information that's coming out. It's because of how the Clinton camp has decided to handle this. This A report came out that said, essentially, all of the claims that Hillary Clinton has been making for the last year about this email scandal are patently untrue. Completely false. So their strategy to handle it is to keep saying the same untrue things to just plow ahead just keep doing it what are you doing what are you doing what are you doing there's nobody around you that can tell you Hillary listen um you can't keep lying about this you can't keep doing it because this is the thing that's hurting you the most in the general election is your trustworthiness numbers. It's like somebody ran in the room, this just did, Mrs. Clinton. <laughs> You're one of the least liked candidates in the history of American politics. Really, what's the problem? People don't trust you. How are we gonna solve this problem? Hillary goes, I got it. We're gonna lie our way through it. <laughs> it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. Unbelievable. Now she's tweaked it a little bit saying she came out and she said, well, I thought it was allowed. I thought it was allowed. I, I must have been wrong. You, th you thought it was allowed. Nobody could have possibly thought it was allowed for the Secretary of State to have an email server in her bathroom that nobody knew about. Nobody could possibly think that was allowed. Don't give me that. That's... Who do you... How stupid do you think people are? I thought it was allowed. You thought it was allowed? Well, how come uh, the paper that the guy you're telling that to, who, uh, the, the, the guy you're telling that to on TV, the paper he's holding in his hand says, uh, you knew it wasn't allowed because you didn't ask. And the reason you didn't ask is because you knew it wasn't allowed. And the paper says, well, if, we, if she did ask, we would have told her it wasn't allowed. And that's why she didn't ask. And then when people in the State Department brought it up, they were told, don't ask about that, because it's not allowed. I'm paraphrasing, obviously. But they were told never to speak of the email server again by their superiors. You thought it was allowed. You thought it was allowed? You th Who in their right mind could think it would be allowed for the to, to, to route <laughs> sensitive information from the State Department into an unsecured server in your house? Who anybody could hack. That was allowed. You thought that was allowed? Then she gets on. She says, well, it was secure because the, the Secret Service was guarding her house. I'm starting to think that Hillary Clinton has no idea how the Internet works. Like, I think maybe that's the case. Like, I'm starting to think she really has no clue what is in that series of tubes and wires that people call the internet because she look 
I can tell. I've watched enough of Hillary Clinton that I know when she's lying. She has a tell. She goes like this. She raise, raises her eyebrows like this, really high. When she does that, you're she's full of shit. So I know when she's when she's lying, when she's not. And she actually thinks that the Secret Service guarding her house somehow made that that server more secure. She doesn't have a clue how the internet works. It's amazing. It's amazing in 2016 that someone that prolific in our society is that out of touch with with the internet, with, which is essentially controls the world. Now, I'm getting off on a tangent, but the political ramifications of them just plowing straight ahead with the same BS lies it's going to be even more disastrous. Now, the only thing I can think of, the only reason I can think of is that you would possibly do that, is that there is still a pending FBI investigation. Now, it may be that they think an indictment is more likely than you and I think. And so, you would, if that's the case, you need to maintain plausible deniability. If you come out and admit to these things that now you think may actually have been against the law, well, that's that's damning, right? That's self-incrimination. I mean, that seems to me to be the only reasonable explanation. I mean, politically, it's a terrible move to do that. How could you possibly think that was a good idea? You couldn't, right? So there has to be an alternate motivation to, to just plow ahead with the same lie that's been disproven in a document that I have saved to my desktop. <laughs> like anybody can go look at it. It's amazing. So so the only thing that seems to make sense is that she doesn't want to incriminate herself. I don't know. I'm starting to think that when when that that the timing of this IG report is not an accident. I'm starting to think that we're going to see even bigger problems for her when, when uh, because of this FBI investigation. And here's the other thing. Most people aren't even aware that there's an independent right-wing organization um, called Judicial Watch, which is also conducting its own investigation. They've been given legal access to depose, which means to interview, essentially, to interview people who are closely associated with this and they may very well end up being given uh, uh, legal uh, being granted uh, uh, the opportunity to depose Hillary Clinton herself now they just did their first interview with one of uh, Clinton's staffers and, or I'm sorry uh, one of Clinton's um, associates and it was the person it was a person who um, offered to put a server in her office for her I believe um, and he thought it would simply to be to so you could get around using the government email and server if you just wanted to have a conversation with your daughter or with your friends or something like that to, to give her email access you know outside of the the her work email which seems pretty reasonable right um, now they were saying I had no idea what she'd planned on, you know, she had planned on routing actual work government sensitive information through something like this. Now, this isn't a person who set it up in her house. That's a different person. Um, this is just someone who was discussing um, the, you know, the, the how they were hashing it out, how they were going to do this. You can go read that too. There's not a, not really a big bombshell in there. It's not a big deal. But the point is that there's an outside of the FBI there's someone else conducting interviews with people who are in the know and they are legally allowed to release the transcripts of those interviews so I mean this is a sticky wicket to put it mildly and now even the Sanders campaign has come out and said listen the superdelegates need to take this into account um, and now I saw uh, the New York Daily News, an article in the New York Daily News that was actually for the first—it's the first time I've seen it—actually calling for Hillary Clinton to drop out of the race. Uh, that's pretty staggering. Now it's the Daily News. I get it, but I think the the worse this gets, the more you're going to see that, and the more 
the better the chances are that they're not going to want to go with her as, as, as their candidate. Now, I'm on record saying that I think it's not going to be Sanders. It would be Joe Biden who parachutes in with an Elizabeth Warren vice president um, because Joe Biden himself put that out there. Um, and that's the talk around Washington, apparently, is that if, if for some reason Hillary had to back out of the race, they wouldn't give their support to Sanders, which is just staggering. They wouldn't give it to Sanders. They would give her delegates to Joe Biden someone who didn't even run in the primary because they think he would beat Trump. And honestly, Joe Biden with Elizabeth Warren as vice president would probably annihilate Donald Trump. So even though I think it would be a horrible thing to do to their base, I think it would be a terrible mistake in the long term because you would lose everybody under 30 for the rest of their life. They would never vote Democrat again. But in this election, I think you would probably win. That being said, you know, these are all speculative scenarios, and I get that. But that's kind of what I do. Joe Biden himself came out and said, you know, I'm sorry I didn't run. I think I would have been the best president out of all these people. And that scenario also explains why Elizabeth Warren didn't endorse either Bernie Sanders or Hillary Clinton because everybody expected her to to endorse Bernie Sanders and I kept saying well I think it's because she's open to being the vice president of either one of them right she doesn't well if she endorses one of them and they don't win it's kind of hard to turn around and then be the vice president you know vice presidential pick of the other one Um, especially with the Clintons because they're known to be politically vindictive Um, And if she came out and endorsed Sanders, then Clinton would never pick her to be her VP. However, this third scenario actually makes more sense that she's anticipating she's going to end up running with Joe Biden. So take it for what it's worth. Like I said, this is a short video. It's pretty speculative, but I wanted to put some stuff out there that you might not have heard because of the long weekend and because um, the the email scandal has been dominating the news. Um, Yeah.